Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this is a video for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. In this video, we're looking at Chapter 6, Section 4, Emerging Adulthood, Bridging Adolescence, and the Life Beyond. The first thing we want to look at is the definitions of adulthood. Now, just the same way that we said that uh, earlier that adolescence is something that didn't usually exist because it's, a, it's more a concept than a biological necessity. Um, because adolescence is defined uh, not by just the physical changes of becoming sexually mature, but also the assumption of uh, adult responsibilities. In the same way, adulthood is generally defined in terms of what people do rather than how old they are. So for instance, uh, in the past, marriage was the primary standard for adulthood. You weren't an adult until you got married. Um, on the other hand, that's a problematic definition uh, because marriage ages change over time. So, for instance, uh, back in the 60s, the median age for women to get married was 20. And you can see, you know, if you were waiting for somebody to get married to call them an adult, 20 is not so bad. But now it's 26, uh, which is an awfully long time to wait to call somebody an adult. And, and there's been a similar shift in marriage age for men. So, you know, that doesn't seem like it's really uh, the best definition for adulthood anymore. Instead... Uh, the shift to adulthood is characterized a little more by accepting self-responsibility and financial independence and the establishment of personal values and beliefs. And this is along with the formation of an equal relationship with the parents, where it's no longer the hierarchical uh, one. Um, also, in, in today's culture, the idea here is that society or social forces and tradition no longer plays such a direct influence on people's young lives. It's still there but it operates differently and it's not such an overwhelming influence. Instead, younger population has more freedom to make their own choices, although you know economic considerations will tend to constrain some of those choices. Now, some of the important choices, especially given the economic situation, can uh, include education and career goals. And you know what's funny about that is, by the way, there are gender differences. Um, it's just worth mentioning that in the time between 1990 and 2006, so a 16-year period, uh, the number of women who earned bachelor's degrees in mathematics, for instance, went down. On the other hand, in the early 90s, um, women were more likely to earn doctoral degrees in a mental health field like clinical or counseling psychology or social work. Um, in fact, that's the most common uh, doctoral degree and the one most frequently earned by women. And so you can see that that changes a little bit of the idea of what's adulthood and the responsibilities that people are taking on. Um, also, the prosperity of some societies um, where there's not an immediate need to go out and start making money to earn a living has produced a new stage of development that some people are calling emerging adulthood. And during emerging adulthood, young people are in the process of gathering information about themselves and the world around them. Part of this is through education. Um, but during this time, they're also financially dependent on their parents. So it's, again, an in-between uh, situation. Now, emerging adulthood is theorized as a distinct period of development, and it's in societies that allow young people an extended opportunity to explore their roles in life. So the adolescent stage precedes the phase of emerging adulthood and young adulthood follows it. And for instance, uh, one researcher, Arnett, theorized that there were five major characteristics of the emerging adulthood phase. First, the age of identity explorations is a feature of emerging adulthood, and it's represented by experimentation with romantic partners and career options. Then the age of instability is a period marked by frequent changes in employment, also in romantic relationships or educational plans. Uh, next, the age of self-focus is a time when young people can make their own decisions more freely, and they're not tied down, quote-unquote, to a life partner. And then uh, the age of feeling in between, and, you know, creative title, is when young people feel wedged between uh, the situation of adolescence and, quote-unquote, real adulthood. And finally, the age of possibilities is marked by really an optimism about the future. And then let's just uh, take one quick look at what Eric Erickson said about the whole thing. Now, Erickson recognized that developed nations, you know, like the U.S., like Europe, tend to extend the period of adolescence. Um, and during this time, we talk about the identity statuses from the last section. And so, for instance, moratorium, that was a word used by Erickson to describe a lengthy quest for identity among adolescents. 
And Erickson and other theorists believe that it was more important to take time to find your own identity rather than excluding it to adopt the opinions of others. And that's one of the big differences you find between individual, excuse me, between individualistic cultures and by, between collectivist cultures and also between industrialized and non-industrialized countries is this opportunity uh, that some people have to uh, explore their own identities as opposed to really a mandate that a lot of people have to go out and uh, make a living or uh, start contributing in a more substantial manner. Anyhow, that's where we're going to end the chapter.